As dawn broke over the laid-back town of Rabaul, about 100 Australian military cadet officers gathered around the Rabaul Cenotaph, a monument built in memory of the fallen. They represented thousands of others who died fighting battles many years ago. Others who gathered for the occasion are related to someone or knew someone who died during the war. The occasion this morning was preceded by a dusk service yesterday evening to pay tribute to the Montevideo Maru, a Japanese warship that ferried prisoners of war during the Second World War. The vessel that was not marked as a POW carrier was torpedoed by a US submarine killing all 845 on board. Most of them were Australians. There were no Australian survivors, no fathers, sons, brothers, uncles, cousins or friends survived. The Anzac Day began as a day of remembrance for one of Australia and New Zealand soldiers' worst military defeat during the First World War fought in Gallipoli about 100 years ago. But over the years, the occasion has included other military battles where lives were lost. Some were prisoners of war and some were interned civilians. All were caught up in the Japanese invasion of Rabaul in the war for the Pacific. In Papua New Guinea, the Second World War's Battle of the Pacific remained an unforgettable piece of history where Papua New Guinea natives stood alongside the Allied forces and fought against the Japanese. And it was here, in Rabaul Simpson Harbor, that became one of their battlefields. While the significance of Anzac Day celebrations may seem of little importance to many Papua New Guineans, it portrays a relationship that goes back many decades. It's a relationship that laid foundations and contributed towards building Papua New Guinea as a nation of its own, paid by those who gave their lives as an ultimate sacrifice. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Kokopo.